the Chancellor announced the changes to the VAT rules for the uh, leisure industry. Um, there wasn't a huge amount of detail initially about this. Uh, it came into force on the 15th and businesses haven't had a lot of time to react. Uh, getting an awful lot of questions from clients at the moment. I think the expectation was that there was going to be a reduced standard rate. So I think everyone was gearing up for that. So then when it was limited just to the sort of hospitality and tourist industry, that's when a lot of people just thought oh, it doesn't really apply to me. When in fact it applies to all businesses in that although it's a, a reduced rate just for those specific areas, if, for example, you are a business that is likely to be using um, hotel accommodation or subsistence claims or indeed parties for staff, then it will be a case of needing to open some kind of VAT code within their purchase ledgers to ensure that they're actually capturing the right amount of VAT and not overstating their that recovery claim. So at the moment, we're very much focusing on those sectors, but in fact, every business should be looking at making some changes. Yeah, so all businesses entering purchase invoices or invoices that are from those industries will need to be careful when making entries, making sure that they, they identify the 5% VAT. I don't think clients have really thought about putting this in place. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very much being promoted as something that just affects those sectors rather than our businesses as uh, recipients of those and I think that if the uh, purchase ledger staff aren't aware or haven't you know opened a specific code and there aren't is it guidance for them then they will be doing just putting in the gross amount and the wrong that fraction is then used yeah. based on 20% yeah there's a uh... There's a commercial decision for businesses to, to be taken here, isn't there? Because uh, they have the option. Do they maintain their prices at the gross level um, and only have to pay over a small amount of VAT, which means they take a greater profit? Or do they reduce their prices and give the VAT savings to the customers in order to entice more people in? Well, absolutely. I think the government intended when it reduced the VAT rate that um, businesses were going to then lower their prices. And indeed, in press, we have seen a number of big names have been looking at reducing their prices. Uh, but that's not a requirement. If we've got smaller businesses or indeed restaurants which have menus and all sorts, to suddenly have to change the whole uh, pricing structure in only a matter of days. I mean, the announcement was only last week. Um, that's going to be quite difficult. Mm. So keeping the same prices means that the business is effectively getting the, the benefit of the VAT rate change hmm. rather than the consumer. Uh, but th this, uh, this won't affect all of their uh, products. There'll be a number of businesses out there that have uh, part of their, their service and product lines affected, uh, but other areas are still at the 20% rate. So if you're a restaurant that also has a delivery service, uh, in the past, everything was subject to 20% because it is restaurant and you're eating in. There is no possibility of taking stuff away. Now, if you're a, a local fish and chip shop that is maybe part restaurant and part takeaway, in the past, um, the uh, sitting in catering would all be subject to VAT. Um, and then the takeaways, if you're talking about cold food, things like uh, sandwiches or, or cakes or milk, um, all sorts of things, they were actually zero rated uh, by the restaurant. And now what we have is that the uh, eating in a meal in the restaurant is all now subject to 5%, uh, except for alcoholic drinks, everything else is 5%. But if you are taking away that food, we're now saying that the hot food, which would have been subject to 20%, is now 5%. The cold food, which is sandwiches, uh, cakes, etc., that will still be zero. But where you have, uh, say, um, a, a Coke or crisps or, or anything that was going to have been standard rated before, that's still standard rated. So if you're going to buy your fish and chips, a sandwich, a Coke and crisps, your fish and chips is five, your sandwich is zero, and the rest are standard rated. And you're going to have to expect that the girl that's on the till now is knowing which bits are going to be um, uh, put into the till to make sure the VAT accounted for is correct. That's really hard. It is. It's, I mean, it's far more complex than it initially appears. Uh, my mind immediately turns to the accounting treatment of that and, you know, how, how people's systems are going to cope with that. 
So uh, if you are um, operating a TIL system, you need to ensure that your EPOS system is updated to, to accommodate all those different variables. Uh, and you know, any business with a, with a large number of uh, products uh, in their TILs, it's going to be a big exercise to get their EPOS TILs updated. Uh, and obviously this started from uh, yesterday with only a few days yes. warning for people to get ready. So Less sophisticated difficult. businesses may not have these fancy TILs. Yeah. Um, if you've got a till system that's actually linked up to your uh, accounting as well, then effectively, um, whoever is putting in the, the various sales into the till, that will then be reflected into the accounting system. But if it's not that sophisticated, mm -hmm. then um, it is going to be difficult. It's all about inserting the right types of products at the right rate. So if you have something like uh, a fizzy drink, if you take out the fizzy drink, it's 20. But if you have the same fizzy drink that you're drinking in the cafe, that's mm. 5%. So it's not going to be logical. No. I think for businesses who are simply raising invoices, this won't be too difficult. They'll need to be careful when raising invoices to make sure they select the right rate. Uh, but the 5% VAT rate has existed in the past for things like utilities, uh, and therefore it probably exists in the accounting systems. But the people raising the invoices will have to you know, beware and take take care to make sure they select the 5% rather than the automatic 20% that will uh, populate. Well, I think the invoice question is even further complicated, if you like, because um, as private individuals, we can't recover any VAT. So if we go for a meal or um, we stay in a hotel, uh, we're not that interested in whether that's um, being charged at 20 or 5 Obviously, if the um, hotel actually reduces that price, then yeah, we're, we're delighted. But in a lot of cases, the prices haven't been adjusted. So we're looking at the same price. When we go on the internet and try and book a hotel room, it will be the same amount. It's just the VAT is different. But if you are- That was a really good example here, isn't it? Because that will have corporate and individual uh, customers and they will have differing treatment for, for both so I mean talk talk through the complexities of, of what you do with the VAT reduction when you've got corporate and uh, individuals as customers. Yes yeah, so at the moment if you're a business and you are um, buying any of these products so if you're going into the um, cafe for subsistence purposes you're able to claim the VAT um, if you're booking into a hotel you cover the VAT. Now the difficulty here will be um, for uh, restaurants and cafes, sometimes they will give you what's called a less, less detailed uh, VAT invoice, which means that the amount that's on that invoice is the gross figure. It won't actually separate out the VAT figure. So what happens normally is when a claim is made, the uh, purchase, um, when a claim is made uh, and, and inserted into the system, it will expect um, a VAT fraction to be calculated. Now, at the moment, if you have a um, receipt that is a VAT receipt, but it doesn't separate, separate out the VAT, you just divide by six, and that will give you the VAT amount that you are able to claim. But um, at the moment, um, we don't even know if those less detailed receipts, uh, restaurants, etc. it does need to say 5% at the bottom, I don't know if people have checked that. And then um, when it's claimed by the business, it will have to be claimed at 121st, which would then give you the VAT amount. Well, that's assuming there isn't a mix of uh, VAT rates in there for alcohol, non-alcohol. You know, uh, you'll end up with a blended rate on those. Uh, you will, businesses. you will. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I actually don't know what businesses are having to do now, because if you've got three rates on a return, you would, on a receipt, you wouldn't normally have that. No. The 5% wouldn't really apply to that kind of um, retail invoice. Hmm. So we are in a, we have got a problem there. Whether our systems, till receipts, EPOS systems can actually set something out that says this part of your meal is standard rated your wine any alcoholic drinks is standard rated your eating meal is five percent and if there is a zero rated element as well that that's all uh, shown on a receipt uh, if you buy something from a large supermarket that will be able to do that because their systems are very sophisticated so it's mm -hmm. more the smaller businesses that are going to struggle we mentioned earlier about the, the commercial decision about whether you pass the saving on 
to the customer or not. For a hotel with corporate clients, that's again difficult, isn't it? Because let's say the price was £100 plus VAT, 120 before, an individual will still pay £120 and, and won't know the difference. But a corporate client, if you maintain the price at £120, you've actually put the net cost up for them, haven't they? Because they're only able to claim a smaller amount of VAT back. Yes, that's absolutely right. So effectively, if it is billed on the website as £120, it would be interesting whether in the background the terms and conditions actually say that amount is gross um, and the VAT or whatever is the prevailing rate is what's chargeable. If it actually says VAT at 20%, people are actually going to need to check the various terms and conditions you know, bit behind um, sales on the internet, or indeed any uh, terms and conditions. And if they have, so contract, if, if they have contracts with uh, net cost plus VAT as well, they won't have a choice but to reduce the uh, the gross price and pass on the saving to the to the corporate. Well, that's exactly right. I don't think people have checked that. Hmm. I think they've seen the headline, which is you don't need to change prices. But obviously, the contractual terms are the terms and conditions that. Um, uh, behind the scenes if you like that is the basis of the contract with the customer mm. so it may well be that those terms and conditions are uh, net plus VAT in which case this calculation isn't going to work and so we've kind of touched on uh, the, the cafes the restaurants and uh, the hotels what, what other industries or areas are, are going to have complexities that come off the back of these new rules I think the real challenges are where uh, it's a sort of tourism business transaction. So we've talked about um, buying hotel accommodation. Uh, if you are selling hotel accommodation together with a package, maybe uh, tickets for a show, uh, maybe a meal in a restaurant, then you're treated as a tour operator, which means effectively you're doing more than just providing accommodation. You're buying in various uh, various products as package. Now, at the moment, there is a scheme called a tour operator's margin scheme, which means for VAT purposes, they're not actually doing as normal retailers do. They, they follow a different set of rules. They don't recover VAT when they incur those costs, and they only account for that on the margin. In this sort of situation, you would have thought that the margin will only be... Um, based on 5%, but it's not. The margin is still at 20%. So anyone that's having to um, apply the tour operator's margin scheme is going to have real difficulties. We're going to have a situation whereby if they buy a hotel from you, just as a hotel, through a website or, or wherever, then the price is one price. But if they get that same hotel room together in a package with tickets or something else, then the price of the hotel goes up because there's actually an additional charge under the, under the margin scheme. It's not at 5%, it's at 20%. So I think a lot of people are going to you know, make misunderstandings and, and calculate the wrong figures.